Thank you for tuning into Hilantra Podcast. Get ready for a dose of holistic wellness talks to help you achieve optimal health. Enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome to this episode of Hilantra, where we dive into the world of holistic wellness and integrative health. Today we have a very special guest, the brains behind Hoopla, an app that's changing the game in mental wellness for children. As a parent herself, she has experienced firsthand the challenges of raising children in this fast-paced world. With a personal journey of tackling anxiety herself, she decided that it was time to make a difference. Hoopla isn't an average app. It's a toolkit for both parents and children. And today we're digging into the crucial topic of anxiety in children and why it's important to equip them early on with the right tools and how tech, when used wisely, can be a powerful ally. So let's unravel the story of Hoopla by welcoming Jacqueline, the force behind this transformative app. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, Thank you so much for the kind introduction and having me on. I'm so excited to talk about Hoopla and answer any of your questions. That's amazing. So, you know, when I was going through uh, your website and all I could think about was let's Hoopla. So I don't know if this is something (laughs) that was intended for the app, but I find it like quite catchy. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, it's it was very much intended. Um, I mean, even now, the people who are using it, they're like, oh, we need a little hoopla in our life. And that's what hoopla is all about. I mean, the the word hoopla means bringing excitement, usually excessive excitement to something. And I think as children, we do that with everything and we lose that as an adult. But I think it's really important to bring excitement to everything you do. Oh, it was an amazing name, like spot on, honestly, because it kept ringing in my head. I'm like, okay, <laughs> is it triggering something good in my head? It's a good, it's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know. Usually when people say it, it always makes people smile. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. So thank you for telling us what it means. That was going to be one of my questions. But yeah, can you share with us your personal journey and what inspired you to create the app? Of course. Um, so as you mentioned, I've always struggled with anxiety my entire life. And, you know, when I was a child, I didn't really realize what I was experiencing. But over time, it was really crippling. And it, um, you know, I wasn't able to take advantage of everything around me in terms of school and work because of this anxiety. And now with two young kids, I realize the impact that it has on your life because I wasn't able to manage it until I was an adult. And I wanna make sure that my five-year-old and my seven-year-old, they have the tools and the resources that I didn't have growing up. Um, So that's really why I wanted to embark on this. It was from a personal space, but as I spoke to many other parents, I realized it was something that a lot of parents wanted help with. And that's when I decided, oh, there's a real market opportunity here and I could create a business out of it. That's beautiful. I think that when something that you do comes from a place that, of inspiration and something that's uh, that has a personal connection, I think it adds that extra element to it that you wouldn't normally have, right? Exactly. Yes. And do you have any previous experience in wellness? Um, no, just for my own personal journey. Um, but I am more of a marketing branding expert. I was working for an agency for a while and um, in education, culture, and luxury goods. So you combined all of your expertise and obviously your personal journey into this. That's beautiful. Exactly. And and what's your mission, would you say, behind Hoopla, apart from what you already uh, told us, obviously, from your personal experience? Yeah, I mean, I really want to create accessible resources for families. And, you know, we all have phones in our pockets. So why not try to figure out how we can use these phones as really powerful tools? Um, I want to make sure that every family has these resources at home, because when I was searching for them and when I talked to people who were searching for them, it's expensive. It's difficult to find. Um, You don't really know where to look. So if we just have something that's truly accessible that can reach every family, 
globally, then I think that can be really powerful. There are a lot of resources that are good for adults, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that there's a difference between handling anxiety in children and handling anxiety with adults. So maybe you, you can tell us from your experience, how do they differ? Sure. I mean, I think that as children, you need to create a new vocabulary. You need to start the conversations differently. Um, so that's really what this what Hoopla is all about. It's supposed to start conversations between the parent and the child and to form connections. Um, everything is supposed to be done with the parent and child together. And that's surely what differentiates us from other apps because a lot of other apps, you know, they might be child led where you give the phone to your child. Children want games and videos. Parents want to limit screen time. So there's this disconnect. So what we try to do is create something where, you know, the it is a parent led app. So it forces the parent to really connect with their child and for them to be the leader and to kind of lead their children on this journey and to give both parents and children the tools that they need. Is it more video-based or is it activity-based? It's not video-based. I mean, there are some videos, there are some animations, but we have a multi-sensory experience. So we not only use audio um, primarily, we also use the phone's haptic feedback, which is the vibration of the phone. So we can create different tactile sensations like heartbeats and waves and beats to music. And when this is paired with the right audio, it really engages children in a deeper way without needing a video screen. I can look just like a flamingo Standing straight with arms out wide Bend over to pick up my foot and flap slow Then try again on the other side Wow, that's uh, that's very interesting. Uh, do you have like a specific time that you would recommend parents uh, to use the app for on a daily basis, let's say? I mean, I think it's really personal preference. Um, we just launched a new version of the app, so it became available two days ago on iOS store. Um, and we will be enhancing some features, so we'll be able to provide notifications where parents can select what time of day they want to you know, incorporate this into their life. But it really depends. Some families, they find it really soothing right before bed. Other families might have time right after school and they need kind of a transitional period. So it really is personal preference. And that's what we love about it because we want something that can adapt to every family's needs. Yes, that's very important because like you said before, children's language when it comes to this is almost non-existent like you can't use words like trauma and anxiety with a child because they don't understand it even a teenager if you come and tell them you know let's talk about emotions there's so much maybe still emotions that haven't been understood they're just trying mm -hmm. to understand they're trying to go through uh, you know different stages of life they they don't really know what's happening inside of them so the language is, is so different when it comes to dealing with these things between uh, children and adults. So can, that brings me to another question. What's the age uh, appropriate um, for children to use this app? Sure. Well, right now, the content primarily focuses on age three to eight years old. So during those developmental years, um, and you see that just in the graphics that we use, you know, we have little animated characters like sleepy sheep and sensitive sloth, and it is more directed towards the younger years. Um, however, we we want to incorporate the whole family. So it is something if there are older siblings, then they could still benefit from, you know, the family meditations and some of the games as well. You mentioned meditations now. This is something that I would really like my 13-year-old to start doing with me because I practice yes. it daily. How yeah. do you get or encourage kids to practice these meditation, uh, let's say, games on the app? Mm -hmm. Well, one of our newest features is offering 21-day challenges. And the first challenge is the family meditation challenge. So it's something that, again, it's just an introduction. It's a five-minute meditation. Every day is a little bit different. Um, you know, it's something that can really 
expand into everyone's needs. So if the children are more active, then you let them be active. You know, it's not a rigid, rigid structure. It's just trying to get everyone connected for five minutes. Um, there's also a gratitude check-in. There's a mood check-in. So it's just creating that routine and creating that healthy habit over time. Um, we believe that you know, by testing it with different families, this is a really great way to incorporate it into your life. Hello, Hoopla family. Welcome to day two of our amazing 21-day meditation challenge. Yesterday, we started by embracing gratitude in our hearts. Today, we're going to take a fun and memorable journey together, exploring gratitude in a whole new way. Beautiful. Um, I'm getting a little bit more into like the anxiety part. Do you think childhood anxiety is overlooked by parents? Let's say, how many out of 10 would you say this happens in families? Yeah, I mean, I think anxiety is it's a huge problem. And unfortunately, it's, it's underdiagnosed. It's, um, I mean, if you look at the statistics, on average, it's 11 years between symptom onset and actually treatment. Wow. So half of all mental health issues in adults actually start before the age of 14. And this includes anxiety. And anxiety is, um, you know, one of the most common mental health issues that children are facing. So I think that it's a huge problem. And one of the most difficult things is that it comes in so many different forms. Some children, you know, they withdraw. Some children, they act out. So it's really hard to, to actually, as a parent, to understand what this could be. And it's often misdiagnosed. As well. Yes, that's so true. And anxiety comes linked to um, different other conditions as well. Maybe it's a symptom of other conditions. So let's say, for example... I've had experience um, meeting parents who've had who have kids with um, uh, who've been diagnosed with ADD or ADHD. Anxiety is always attached to that. So you will always find the kid. Yes, they have lack of focus. Anxiety is always there. Um, so, but then unfortunately, there is still a lot of parents in our generation. Although many of us have already, you know, crossed this taboo or like you know, gotten rid of this taboo of this is not like, okay, or there's nothing wrong with my child. But still, there are a lot of parents in our generation that would tell you, oh, no, you know, my child is fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Or you have somebody that you know that have a, they, they have a friend with a child that their symptoms are so obvious, but they're like, we don't want to tell them because it might hurt their feelings. They might take it the wrong way. So this to me, I think also is something that parents these days need to be educated on there needs to be some kind of awareness you know whether it's through social media or or you know other channels or mediums i think schools even have the responsibility to create this kind of awareness with with parents first obviously um to kind of continue to break the stigma behind this you know whatever whether they feel it's shame or whatever it is the parents might might feel because in the end of the day the wellness and the health of their kids should be first and foremost the most important thing for them so i be i believe you mentioned that you work as well with schools um so can you tell us how that relationship works well we're starting to talk to schools um and we are very new so really right now we're just doing some pilot programs but uh, we aren't. We don't have an official program with any schools at this time because we're so new. But it is something that we definitely want to, um, you know, collaborate more with different organizations and schools in the future. Because what we find, and this is to your point, is we are a society that is reactive. So once there is a problem, we respond to it rather than try to prevent it. And I think with anxiety, if we can start giving the tools even before there are any symptoms or signs of anxiety, because anxiety, it's everyone has anxiety. You know, it is a good thing as well. Um, this is human nature and it protects us in certain ways as well. You know, it, for a small child, it protects them from climbing too high, things like that. So anxiety is something that can be good, but we do 
need to know how to manage it. And it's about that emotional regulation that is so important. And that's what Hoopla is supposed to do because it is for everyone. It's not focused on children with anxiety or with certain mental health issues. It's providing tools um, for parents and children. It's providing that point of connection. It's also helping families learn how to integrate technology into their family life. Um, because if you don't know how, that can create all different problems and, you know, definitely impact mental health. When sensitive sloth feels nervous, his heart beats really fast. But guess what? We can help sensitive sloth and ourselves calm down by doing something special. Here's what we'll do. Hold the phone really still and relax your body. Breathe in slowly. And then, breathe out slowly. As you breathe calmly, something magical happens. Sensitive sloth's heartbeat slows down, and his body feels more peaceful. Can you feel it? Remember, whenever you feel nervous or need to relax, you can come back to these exercises. Yes, absolutely. I mean, like you said in the beginning also, uh, we're, we're a lot concerned as parents on how much screen time our children are getting during the day. So we want to always limit it. We're always finding ways to either prevent them from spending too much time or limit it. And personally, I get really triggered by, you know, whenever I see my, my daughter on her device uh, for a big chunk of the day, even though you have to take into account as well that at this age and these days, they're using their devices to study, to do homework, to do assignments, to do projects. So it's like, okay, no mom, but I'm, I'm, you know, the last hour and a half or two hours I spent doing a project. And then it's like, how can you manage it? How can you control it when it becomes, when the children become at that age, when they have to use the device for work? And then obviously we use it now especially after COVID, we use it as a social connection tool. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. also, you know, that sense of community, you're also using the device to kind of have that sense of community for us who live as expats in other countries that were, you know, our families are not, are not with us as well. We need to connect with them. So there's so many different layers of why technology is crucial. We can't really avoid it. We can't really, <laughs> you yeah. know, like completely disregard it or completely have it take it out of our lives. So there is that concern. And so, and you're using technology in a positive way. So you said that you're now trying to launch this uh, notification and trying to um, add different uh, features to your app. But if you were to have like a vision uh, for the future, for the application, how do you see it? Striking that balance between, you know, having enough or just the right amount of um, screen time when it comes to, let's say, being on this app in particular. Sure. Yes. And it's screen time and the, the debate revolving around screen time is something that we think about every single time we add more content and add additional features. Um, and the two main things that we focus on is what is the type of content we want to make sure that it's educational that it's there's a purpose behind it it's not just for entertainment you know we do have an overall goal of mental health so we make sure that everything relates to that we also have limited amounts of time so all of the activities are five minutes or under and again that's really important for us so yes you could have multiple exercises that you're doing in a day and spend more time on it but the most important thing for us is that people are engaged with it for five minutes a day, just kind of like brushing your teeth. You know, it becomes a habit and a healthy habit. Um, and we made sure in our testing that the people weren't staring at the screen. So, for example, um, we wanted yoga poses to be incorporated into it where the parents and the children do yoga poses together. So we hired someone to create videos. And what we found when we saw people interacting with this exercise is they were just staring at the screen, trying to match the yoga poses. So we thought, okay, how can we still incorporate this activity, but in a way where they're not going to stare at the screen? So we hired a singer and songwriter. And instead of having a video, we had an image of a person in a pose. And then we had a song that guides children into how to get into this pose. And then when we tested it, we found there was more interaction between the parent and the child and they were laughing and giggling as they were trying to get it right. And so 
we make sure that every single exercise we put on there is thoughtful and you know we still need to enhance certain things and adapt certain things but this is our starting point and um, we make sure that there is limited screen time with everything we do. Well, that's such a beautiful exercise. Very exciting and very, um, very uh, smart as well that you did it in this way. So uh, singing, there's that uh, aspect of, you know, let's have fun while doing it. And also yeah. it's not like you said, let's not look at the screen as much. I love it. And so how do you, um, let's say, how many people do you work with? What kind of experts do you work with to kind of create the content that you put on the app? Well, right now we have a lot of content creators all over the world, um, just on more of a freelance basis. I mean, we are a startup at the moment, so we, we work with a lot of people on projects um, full time. We have a team of five, so it's myself and I have a co-founder and he is focused on the product development and technology. And then we have someone helping with social media and marketing. Um, and more, you know, client outreach. And then developers are working on the back end um, and the designs. And then the content creation is created. It's a collaborative process because we work with educators, healthcare providers. They provide a lot of resources to us. And then we adapt it through singer songwriters. We have body percussionists, we have storytellers. Um, so, it is a very much a collaborative process. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And there are so many modalities out there. So through this platform, I interview um, practitioners. practitioners from different, who practice different modalities. And the idea is I want to create more awareness around holistic wellness practices or alternative uh, wellness practices as well. So I come across uh, people from so many different backgrounds. One thing that I have to say that till now it has been in common with everybody, myself included, who has come, who has been a guest in the show, was their story started that they were facing um, some kind of, um, um, let's say, a condition or a chronic uh, condition or some kind of, you know, like yourself, it was uh, struggling with anxiety, and they found a way to deal with it and to overcome it. And then they wanted to bring that awareness and that, um, uh, you know, I, that kind of the tools that they learned, they wanted to bring them and help other people as well who are facing a similar uh, condition or struggle. And I love that. I love that because, you know, it, it's just like, you know, I don't have to just go to one place uh, to get the knowledge, the information, or the help that I need or the support that I need uh, for whatever it is that I'm struggling with, whether it's uh, mental, emotional, or physical. And uh, yeah, that's why it's, uh, you know, it's, ve it's very, very interesting that, you know, the different modalities that I, uh, that I've come across and that I have seen as well, you know, you have energy healing, people who practice mindfulness techniques, meditation techniques, yoga has become so widespread. There's people who focus on different types of yoga. I mean, I don't, I, I don't even, uh, you know, remember the names of the practices or like the different, uh, you know, specific yoga techniques that people practice. So this is really, really interesting. And it's beautiful that you're uh, going into this domain, focusing on what's what's good for children, because you don't find a lot of people who do this specifically for children. I think it's beautiful because, like you said, prevention is more important and maybe more crucial in many cases than actually dealing with this uh, with the uh, issue or the disease or the condition after it's already happened exactly yeah and i mean i love how you mention all of these different practitioners because that was really important we we wanted to make sure that everyone was included in this and that there was such a variety of perspectives. We didn't want it to be something clinical that only came from the voice of a psychologist, for example. We wanted to make sure that we had people who were experts in sound healing and meditation and, and incorporate that all into it because it is so powerful and it is that holistic um, you know, practice that we believe can really make a difference. Yes, absolutely. I mean, even something as simple as 
your diet, the food that you that you that you eat can yes. affect your mental wellness, can affect your emotion, your emotion, emotional health. So mm-hmm. all these things coming together. And if you if you know what you're doing is really, really beautiful. I When we met um, maybe a year ago, um, that's the thing that caught my attention the most because I'm like, OK, that's amazing. Like I have so much respect for somebody who's trying to bring all of this um together in one app it's a lot of work i i'm pretty sure it's a lot of work and i um i mean i'm very excited to see where you're gonna take this and the future as well Uh, thank you so much it's been a really wonderful project it's been exciting and already we see how many people who want to come and share their own story and um, share their own concerns so we know that there is definitely a problem and we're here you know to find solutions and it's going to take time but we're here for it that's amazing so i usually like to conclude my um my episodes by asking my guests to give if they can give just one advice to the listeners and in this case parents watching this um or listening to this episode and in how to best take care of their children's health you did mention prevention is better than actually, you know, uh, dealing with the condition. So that's one. But if you can give us one advice that something practical that they can uh, use in today's, especially in today's fast paced digital age, uh, what would it be? I think it's finding that point of connection between you and your child. And I mean, that goes beyond, it's so often we're going through our daily lives and we are with our children for hours of the day, but when are we really sitting down and having that point of connection and having that check-in, you know, we kind of go on autopilot and it's so easy to miss everything that's right in front of you because you have just busy schedules. So whether it's Hoopla helping you or something else, but find that point of connection where you're talking about your feelings, where you're you're setting yourself as the example. Um, I mean, for example, we have a an exercise where it's positive affirmations and you talk about like, I am beautiful, I am kind, I am smart. How many times do children actually hear their parents say that about themselves? So really find the time and um, yeah, that's that's the advice that I can give. And it, it just takes five minutes. Um, it doesn't have to interfere with your schedule. Just five minutes a day where you're truly connecting. That's another vertical. You don't need to, uh, you know, talk to parents who have children suffering from anxiety. You can just tell parents, you know, you're not finding the time to spend quality time with your child. Download the app. Do these exercises. <laughs> <laughs> whether you're doing with the intention of preventing them from having anxiety or not so many of yeah. us these days suffer from this guilt syndrome i think as yeah. parents right like mm-hmm. no matter how much we do for our yeah. kids it's never enough in our head and i think putting out this energy out there children will also feel it they're very highly you know perceptive mm-hmm. Perceptive emotionally, and they yeah. feel it. And I've I've really seen this over the years with my daughter. That you know, the more I feel like I'm not doing enough, the more the more she will act like it's yeah. not enough. So emotionally, even you know, and over and I have done a lot. Like even at some point, we were traveling, um, her and I, just the two of us, uh, maybe a year ago. And I sat down. When you travel, you disconnect from your day to day, your routine. And you do spend a lot of quality time with your family when you travel together. So I really had to sit down and kind of have a, you know, mental going back in time and everything that we went through together, um, the two of us. And I was really contemplating on, I don't understand why I've been feeling this guilty all these years. But because if I have to list them, I've done so much with her. But then who's reminding you that you are doing enough? Because all of all of a lot of the things we see on social media is, you know, do this for your child, do that for your child. You can do this, you can do that. This is how you can become a good parent. And we see so much of that content. And obviously, as a parent, you you watch this content, the more that these social media platforms will feed you that content. Mm-hmm. And and then you're gonna feel that's gonna make you even feel more you know inadequately you know i'm I'm not doing enough and that guilt syndrome right so if 
if for no other reason, then this app is amazing to remind parents that, you know what, here is your five minutes of quality time every, I don't know, a couple of hours if you have a really busy schedule. That's amazing. <laughs> exactly. I know. And I will say like the gratitude check-in, this one small check-in and you can check the box. Um, everyone goes around, but you realize that especially when kids, what they're thankful for that day, it could be the smallest moment that you didn't even recognize that actually impacted them. And it's a really, it can be really powerful for your family just to take that moment to find one thing that just kind of made you smile or that you're happy about. That's true. And children don't need that much, especially in no, that exactly. age. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's usually the little things that they're most excited about. And yeah, and it's they just want to be close to you. They want to be connected. And I mean, as a parent, you need to make sure that you're managing your own emotions and your own mental health, because like you said, the children, they feel everything. And, um, and that's, again, what Hoopla does. It is helping the parents as much as the children. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. This was a really interesting very very like heartwarming as well uh discussion um I'm, I'm very proud of you for what you're accomplishing and i can't wait thank to you. see where you take it thank you so much i really appreciate it thank you for tuning in to this episode we hope you found it insightful and you enjoyed it as much as we did creating it don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this let's continue creating this amazing community of holistic wellness seekers and practitioners together See you in the next one.